What's good, friends? This is a test. Thank you for being here for this test, but those of you participating in it on YouTube especially, because I know the only reason you would put in the effort to follow this here from TikTok is because you really like the sound of my voice, and that should be rewarded with whatever I can do for you. You and I will work out a payment scheme sometime in the future. Right now, I'm just happy to have you here participating in this little live trial of article reaction. That's what this is. I'm going to react to an article on my phone, and you're going to let me know what you thought of the whole experience. So, this article is from Good Housekeeping on goodhousekeeping.com. I'm not familiar with the publication, but just in perusing their website, I can promise you it cost at least $5,000 to set up. No, $10,000. We'll call it five figures, so they've got that going for them. This was written by Alyssa Gaudieri, G-A-U-T-I-E-R-I, -E spelling offered by way of apologizing for pronunciation. And it is entitled, Benjamin Moore Just Revealed a Dreamy Blue as Its Color of the Year 2024. Subtitle, Drawing on the Beauty of Outer Space, Blue Nova is an Intriguing Blend of Blue and Violet. Begin article. Inspired by the allure of outer space, Benjamin Moore just announced Blue Nova as its Color of the Year 2024. The mid-tone shade feels bright and energetic, intended to spark adventure, expand horizons, and drive creativity. With a nod to the night sky, the dreamy blue is eye-catching and full of personality, yet still versatile enough to elevate any room. That was three sentences, and in those three sentences, I feel a number of discretions were committed heinous discretions it's possible. For one thing, it started with inspired by, and I don't know if something that someone was paid to write should be allowed to start with the same words that a personal essay by a high schooler would sound like. They also did the one, two, three, the intended to spark adventure, expand horizons, drive creativity, the, the, the Chevy Express. It's tough, it's versatile, and it's maneuverable. Like, you didn't mean any of those, you know? Had you stuck with one and drawn its descriptions around that, I, I could have gone for that, but you didn't, you didn't stick with one. You did a whole bunch of things, and now I don't believe any of them. Um, also, three sentences for an opening paragraph. This is a good rule of thumb for you. If you can't stretch it to five, and I'm talking about nonfiction here, if you can't stretch your introductory paragraph to five sentences, you can keep it down to two. The only reason people think two is unprofessional is because of deep cultural biases, wherein in our shared mythology, triplet power was always greater than duo power. And you can look that up in Joseph Campbell. Moving on. Um, finally, they did the yet. They did the hyphen yet, or the comma yet, a.k.a. I don't want to see, seem too wordy in my characterization, so I'm hiding it within perceived sentence control. Let me tell you about sentence control. If you draw attention to it, that attention is almost always going to be negative. So instead of writing his biceps were massive, powerful, veined with liquid iron, and yet there was a gentleness to his chocolate brown eyes that drew me in. Instead of writing that, write a sentence about his biceps, then end it. Then write another sentence, or better yet, two or three sentences about his eyes. This person's getting paid by the word and is on some sort of commission, so they can't do that, but I just despise the, the yet. I feel like it's a very weak tool in a writer's arsenal. <clears throat> Today in a live-streamed event, Benjamin Moore announced this year's galactic-inspired color at an orbital launch site in Cape Canaveral, Florida, for Blue Origin, an American aerospace manufacturer founded by Jeff Bezos. Before settling on the space-inspired hue, the popular paint brand considered a number of color options, but the team kept coming back to Blue Nova. 
Blue Nova 825 is an alluring mid-tone that balances depth and intrigue with classic appeal and reassurance, said Andrea Magno, color marketing and development director at Benjamin Moore. There is so much to unpack there. I guess we can start with the first clause, which is today in a live-streamed event. Benjamin Moore live-streamed paint. A company that is publicly traded live-streamed paint before this article was written. You know who else live-streamed paint? An Irish Twitch streamer that I follow. And he did it as a gag. And he later evolved that gag. And I have the distinct feeling that Benjamin Moore is not going to evolve whatever this is. So Benjamin Moore live-streamed paint from a launch site in Cape Canaveral, Florida. So NASA's launch sites can be rented. We, we inadvertently learned that. This is good world building right here. Uh, for Blue Origin, an aerospace manufacturer founded by Jeff Bezos. I didn't know that that was a thing. That's a distressing way to find out by it. Um, but uh, they just kept on coming back to Blue Nova 825, did they? They had other options that couldn't be marketed with Blue Origin, an American aerospace manufacturer founded by Jeff Bezos. But they kept on coming back to the palette that could be marketed alongside Blue Origin, an American aerospace manufacturer founded by Jeff Bezos. You don't say, Andrea Magno, color marketing and development director at Benjamin Moore. Color marketing and color development director. I don't get to say this very often. I take great relish in it because there is no doubt in my mind, nor will I allow for it anywhere in our shared reality, that Andrea Mango is getting paid enough. <clears throat> Not only did Benjamin Moore reveal Blue Nova as a trending hue for 2024, it introduced its color trends palette for 2024, a total of 10 shades that blend traditional and modern design styles. There are soothing neutrals like Pristine, an off-white with dusky pink undertones, Honeybee, a soft yellow, and White Dove, a clean classic white. For a surge of warmth, there's Teacup Rose, a vibrant mixture of pink and coral, and topaz, a deep orange with brown and red undertones. To complement Blue Nova, there are a number of other cool tones. Regent Green, a deep pine green that's nearly black. Antique Pewter, a green-gray hue. Polar Sky, a pale crisp blue. And Hazy Lilac, a moody violet with gray undertones. That was a joy to read, honestly. Except for Color Trends Palette 2024, Benjamin Moore is of the mindset that they've bought enough data from Google and Amazon that they can tell you what wavelengths of the visible light spectrum that they have created patented names for are trending. So look forward to keeping up with that. But hats off to Alyssa Godieri for making those colors just fantastic to read out. I can tell you from experience of trying to emulate science fiction, which to my mind at a certain point all comes down to descriptive prose, that it is very hard to make a rapid fire list of colors sound individually appealing because the mind just glazes over if there's too much detail, but you know in your heart that people won't understand what you're describing if you don't give enough. Alyssa Godieri has hit the perfect balance between glaze and tease and uh, an off-white with dusty pink undertones. They made a very deliberate choice to say dusty rather than dusky, and that was genius because everybody knows what dusty looks like, and therefore they can take the appearance of Dusty and mold it into this new idea of undertones being Dusty within an off-white base. No one knows what a Dusky outlook is, or what Dusky means as an adjective. We know what Dusk looks like. We don't know what it means to look Dusky, especially not 
is an undertone. So that was just a genius choice there. I already know what Topaz looks like, and I think Alyssa Godieri knows that I already know what Topaz looks like. So they described it as a deep orange with brown and red undertones. That is one adjective and three distinct colors. That is bravery right there to say, you know what? People have an idea of Topaz. I am not owned by Benjamin Moore. My services belong to good housekeeping. So I'm not going to razz them up into the stratosphere. Please acknowledge the space pun that I did there that goes with their bullshit Blue Origin cross-platform promotion. I'm not going to razz them into the stratosphere. I'm just going to give one adjective to a color we already know and then two other colors we already know and let the and let the reader's mind figure that out. And that was phenomenal. Um capping off the article. The Color Trends 2024 palette tells a story of duality, juxtaposing light against dark, warm and cool, showcasing complementary and contrasting pairings, says Magno. These contrasts invite us to break away from the ordinary, to explore new places, and collect color memories that shape the hues used in our homes. Says Magno. That was that was all one direct, seamless quote from an executive at their company. You um you don't think that was maybe workshopped a little bit, do you? You think someone really takes a journalistic ice pick to Magno's brain and Magno just goes, juxtaposing light against dark, warm and cool, showcasing complementary and contrasting pairings. These contrasts invite us to break away from the ordinary, to explore new places and collect color memories that shape the hues used in our homes. You think that's just how Magno's spouting off? They must be a joy to work with. Also, color memories. Oh, I hope Benjamin Moore has that copyrighted because they're never going to collect the royalties on the phrase color memories. What a stupid fucking phrase. Um, at the end here. That's your cue to experiment with Benjamin Moore's Blue Nova or any of the top paint colors for 2023. I just, oh man, that was, that was fantastic. And, and I am frankly jealous uh, of Alyssa Godieri because they knew what the English degree was for. It never would have occurred to me had I stuck out the degree that I dropped out from. It never would have occurred to me to take the lessons that I learned in fiction and nonfiction and apply them to the paper word commission model. That's insanely insightful and I know it's paying off for them because underneath this article that they wrote, and presumably under every article they wrote, there is a click-through to other articles that they wrote, and under that, an about them section, which has their pronouns, so you know they work for a company that at least pretends to be decent, and also credits them as an associate lifestyle editor, which means that in the future, they can put associate editor on their resume and not be lying, and it also means that in the present, they have a job that does not exist, and that is the job that you want. You have not wanted to get into real jobs since, like, 1965. It's all about jobs that aren't real. They have the best pay. They have the best work locations. They exist in the best cities. Some of them even exist in up-and-coming cities, which is best square. They have the best benefits. They have the best work-life balance. I would do anything for a job that doesn't exist. It also wasn't a sales position. Call center and cold calling work doesn't exist, but you, you, you can't guarantee the commission off that, so that is not uh, a fake position that you would want to feel. But what a fantastic article. Thank you for being here for this reaction to it. Please let me know what you think. This is a, a genuine need for feedback. Uh, and, and again, thank you. Thank you so much in advance. Stay hydrated and stay safe.